हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल मैक पंडित लर्निंग हब इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द लास्ट सेशन वी सॉल्व्ड अ न्यूमेरिकल प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू द डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम ऑफ अ कार हुड हिंच मैकेनिज्म इन द करंट सेशन वी विल टेक अनदर न्यूमेरिकल प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू अ रियल लाइफ मैकेनिकल सिस्टम मेनी अ टाइम्स यू माइट हैव सीन द एक्सकेवेटर डिगिंग द रोड्स Have you ever wondered what are the different elements of an excavator, and what is the degree of freedom of an excavator? In this session, we will take the case of an excavator, and we will try to solve for the degrees of freedom of an excavator mechanism. So let us start. Here. you have been shown a front loader which is a example of an excavator only now we are interested to calculate the degree of freedom of this front loader so as i mentioned before the first step in calculating the degree of freedom is to draw the kinematic diagram so let us draw the kinematic diagram of this front loader and let us see what are the different components of this front loader the figure on the right hand side indicates the kinematic diagram of the excavator now let us try to map the elements of the actual system with that of the kinematic diagram so if you observe the fixed links in the kinematic diagram they basically represent the frame of the excavator the black solid line along with this particular link this is basically represented by the hydraulic actuator of the excavator so the hydraulic actuator is nothing it simply consists of a piston rod and a cylinder arrangement now this particular link it is represented by the boom of the excavator so this structure which you are seeing here this is generally called as boom of the excavator again this solid line this black solid line along with this link this is representing the second hydraulic actuator in the excavator which is again a piston and a cylinder arrangement now if you observe care carefully the remaining links that is this this solid line they are being represented by these two structures in the excavator so one is here another one is somewhere here now this particular link it is being represented by the bucket of the excavator which moves in a specific fashion to perform different operations such as digging of the soil and lifting of the soil now let us try to calculate the degree of freedom of this excavator so again we will start counting the number of links first so let us start with the fixed link itself so let me name this fixed link as link 1 this will also be named as link 1 then let me name this piston rod as link 2 then let me name this hydraulic cylinder as link 3 then we will go to this boom which will be named as link 4 then we will again name this link as 5 then again we will name this link as 6 then again we will name this one this link as 7 and again we will name this link as link 8 and finally the bucket it will be named as link 9 so if you observe the total number of links in this excavator mechanism are equal to 9 now the next step is to count the number of lower pairs in the mechanism so again we will start with the lower pair which is close to the fixed link so let's start with this lower pair so again this is a simple revolute pair so we will name it as 1r then we will go to this this will be named as 2r then we will go to this revolute pair this will be named as 3r similarly this will be named as 4r this will be named as 5r this will be named as 6r this will be named as 7r and again this will be named as 8r comma 9r so one can argue that why i am counting two revolute pairs here 
so if you observe that this is nothing this is a ternary kinematic pair where three links link 6 link 7 link 8 are connected so one ternary kinematic pair it is equivalent to two binary kinematic pair so that's why it will be counted as two now after having counted the number of revolute pairs if you observe carefully there are two prismatic pairs also in this kinematic mechanism so the first prismatic pair is here that is let me name this as 1p the second kind uh, prismatic pair will be here let me name this as 2p so if you observe carefully the total number of lower pairs in the mechanism are basically equal to 9 revolute pairs plus 2 prismatic pairs that is equal to 11. Now the next step is to simply use the Kutchback criteria to calculate the degree of freedom. So we know that Kutchback criteria is given by f equal to 3n minus 1 that is 9 minus 1 minus 2j that is 11 this will become equal to 24 minus 22 so f will become equal to plus 2. So you can see here the degree of freedom of an excavator mechanism is basically equal to 2 that means at least 2 input motions will be required to define the motion of the output link right. So with this I would like to stop this session here and hope to see you in the next session. Thank you.